Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So we're here because I have a, a bag full of books <laughs> that have come into my library that I need to talk to you about. Um, I didn't realize how many I had that came here. We're gonna, we're gonna just own it. It happened. It was a variety of things. I, it's been probably a couple of months because I have two months worth of book of the month books to share with you, maybe three months worth of book of the month books to share. We, I had some books gifted to me. I did some pango shopping. I did a little book trip with my local book club. We went and went around Madison one day and then I ordered from Once Upon a Book Club. They had like a book box that they were giving away. So we're just gonna start. So first we're gonna go through books that have been either gifted to me or sent to me by publishers. First one I have is Bodies to Die For by Lori Brand. Kind of excited about this one. It said, um, brilliant psychological thriller that will have readers wondering whether the perfect body really is worth dying for. Comes out June 11th. Um, it features a fitness influencer who's transformed herself from a before into an after. Um, and she has a thriving business, gorgeous husband, but social media can be deceiving. Offline, she is cutthroat, uh, world of bikini bodybuilding, which I worked with somebody whose daughter was in this and the things she would tell me about this world were crazy, crazy. Um, and there's a secret nemesis, there's, looks like there's some tension. It sounds like an interesting read, so. I, I picked that up. Thank you so much to Caitlin at K Publicity for thinking of me. She always finds me good books, I'm telling you. Then I have this one that was sent to me. This I kind of got more for Matt and for um, my aunt. This is The Puzzle Master by Daniel Trasani. Uh, this one is, uh, it says, reality and the supernatural collide when an expert puzzle maker is thrust into an ancient mystery gives me like national treasure vibes. I don't know why. Uh, one with explosive consequences for the fate of humanity. So I'll report back and let you know what they think. Then where do we go and go from here? This one maybe goes with this one. Okay. This is, this is a good flow, I think. Uh, so then I'm going to talk about books that came into my house because of the Booktube Besties virtual reading retreat. We had our winter um, retreat at the end of February. And during the retreat, a bunch of really fun things happened. We did, um, we do recommendations every retreat where everyone who comes to it gives us recommendations of a book they want to press into someone else's hands. So I have three books that I got, or two books that I got from that. Um, and then uh, we also did a Amazon wish list like gift train. So you, we each got assigned a person to set, to go to their Amazon wish list and send them a book and then we got a book in return. So for that, Jennifer Moody is the one that got my name and so she sent me two books actually off of my wish list. First one is Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway. She said that she either read this or has this on her list to read. Sounds super sweet. So we have Emmy, Emmy, which I think I added this because I call my Emily, I call her Emmy a lot. Uh, she just wants to be in charge of her own life. She wants to stay out late, surf at her favorite beach, go anywhere without her parents, relentless worrying. But Emmy's parents can't seem to let her go, not since the day 10 years ago when her best friend Oliver disappeared. Oliver needs a moment to figure it all out. He thought all these years that his father was the good guy. Not so much. He never knew that his dad had kidnapped him and kept it on the run, discovering it all at once and returning to his old hometown. Has his heart aching and his thoughts swirling. They've been best friends forever. Can they become best friends again? What happened with Oliver? All that fun stuff. I've heard really good things about it. And then she also sent me Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This one, I believe I added on my list during my whole like witchy vibe, usually when I am reading in October. I like these witchy vibes. Somebody had suggested this book and I added to my list. So I'm super excited to get to this. I love this cover with like my whole heart. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for doing that. 
So then Brittany from Rescues and Reads, who also came to our retreat, she also helped us out with doing some reading springs and whatnot, put the wish list together for everyone. Um, she was super, super kind to send each of the hosts a um, book as well off their wish list. So she sent me Girl Forgotten. This is Karen Slaughter. This is, I don't know if it's a companion novel or a second novel to her, I think it's Pieces of Her, which I haven't read yet, um, but Brittany gave the, she actually likes this one better. So I'm excited to get those. I haven't read a Karen Slaughter in way too long, so we should probably fix that. So anyways, thank you ladies for sending me these books. I feel so honored. They are going, they're not even going to the shelves. They're going to go on my like next up shelf over here for sure. So then speaking of the reading retreat, there was a couple of books. I, I kept myself in check this time. I only ordered two from the recommendations. Usually I go a little hog wild, but I did it this time. So I did order a couple of books um, off of Pango during the retreat. The first one is Find Me by Anne Frazier. Um, I don't remember what they said other than it was like super creepy and however they talked about it made me like add it to the cart right away. So it says someone's playing tricks with her past. A bone chilling family history is unearthed in a heart stopping thriller. Uh, convicted serial killer Benjamin Fisher is finally offered to lead San Bernardino detective Daniel Ellis to the isolated graves of his victims. I do remember this. One catch will only do it if, if the FBI profile Runny Fisher, his estranged daughter, accompanies them. And that's where I'm going to stop reading because that's where it sounds even better. Um, and then I picked up The Little Liar by Mitch Elbaum. This one is, I believe, his newest one. And it has a World War II vibe to it. Yeah, 2023. Um, and that's all I had to know. So, and somehow I got a signed first edition. Bought off of Pango. And this book has never been read, you guys. Like... Yeah, this is a this is a brand new book. That was that was a surprise. I love it when that happens. So then we'll go kind of into my next stack because part of again part of the retreat, I believe someone brought up Night Watching by Tracy Sierra. This is is a book that Audrey from Chapters and Converse has been like begging me to read. I believe Amber brought it up at the retreat from Books and Beaches. She also has been bugging me in person to pick this one up. So um, I was a little hesitant, um, but I heard it's also super, super creepy and totally in for it, especially after I read The the Last Word by Taylor Adams. I guess this can have similar vibes to it. So um, don't know much. A chilling account of a horrifying ordeal and a whip smart snapshot of marriage, motherhood, and the female experience. That's all we're going to go with. I'm going into this one blind. Totally. So I picked that up on Amazon, also picked this one up on Amazon. This is The Mona Lisa Vanishes uh, by Nicholas Day. This one is the group read for Middle Grade March. Um, so I'm excited to get to this one. It is a nonfiction middle grade. I don't think I've ever read a nonfiction middle grade, but kind of the story of the Mona Lisa. So I'm considering reading this with Max, but we haven't gotten very far in our current book really reading together so I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. And then the last book I picked up off of Amazon is Belly Up. This is by Stuart Gibbs, another book that I've been eyeing for Max and I to read. Um, I'm really just trying to help him improve his literacy skills. They just they took a hit with COVID. I know he's not the only kid but trying to do my best at home and trying to find some books that appeal to him. Um, and a friend of mine suggested this one because it's a little bit of mystery to it. Um, it says, can you call it a homicide is if the victim is a hippo? And there's a whole series of them. We have Teddy. Um, he's living in America's newest theme park. Um, it's called Fun Jungle. It was supposed to be nothing but, well, fun. But now Henry the Hippo, the park's mascot, has turned up dead and Teddy suspects foul play. Um, and it turns into like he's kind of investigating this mystery. So I think Max is excited to read it. I don't know. We do our best to get excited to read things. All right, so the next thing I did on a, on a whim, it was a late night whim. I don't know what I was thinking, but um, Once Upon a Book Club had a book box that they were selling that would contain a random collection of books, probably overstock that they had. And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to give that a whirl and maybe we'll do a try a chapter and kind of, you know, make a video out, out of it. So I won't go into too much detail on these because I will have them in another video, but I have Main Character Energy by Jamie Veron. Um, not really sure what to think of it. 
After Hill, or After Hill, After All by Heidi McL McLogan? McLogan? We have The Sullivan Sisters by Katherine Ormsby. This like screams YA to me for some reason. And then this book was worth the entire box. I do already own it, but I don't own this copy. And this copy is beyond gorgeous. So we have The Many Daughters of a Foing Moy by Jamie Ford. I again have it, but look at these edges. Look at these end papers. This whole book is beyond gorgeous. So I'm going to put my other book, oh, I put my other book on Pingo. It's fine. Even though my kids gave it to me, maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. Um, but this is, this is just gorgeous. So I'm really excited to read this one, but we're going to have that all part of a separate little reading vlog. So watch for that. Then we have book of the month. I've got, I had to get my own copy of Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This was a book of the year finalist and as a BFF on book, book, of, the, book of the month, I got this one for free. Um, I've read this. I absolutely love this book and adore this book so, so very, very much. So we're adding it to my Abby Jimenez collection. Um, I have Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintanera. Uh, Tintera. I don't know why I added an extra a syllable in there. I've heard so many good, good things about this book. Um, we have, what if you thought you murdered, you murdered your best friend and if everyone else thought so too, and what if the truth doesn't matter? Um, I believe there's some funny elements to this and either some podcast elements, maybe. Yes. Podcast elements in this as well. So I've heard great things. I'm excited. I grabbed as long as the lemon tree grows, as long as the lemon trees grow, by Zulfa Kato, Kato, I don't know, I'm so bad at that. Um, again, heard really, really, really great things about this one. This is, was a backlist one from 2022. Um, historical fiction, and I want to say, yeah, it takes place in Syria. So excited for that one. This is another one that I've been seeing kind of all over the place, and it was or no, this one was just in January 2024. Um, interesting facts about space by Emily Austin. Uh, a fast-paced, hilarious, and ultimately hopeful novel for anyone who's ever worried they might be a terrible person. Um, oh, wow, look at that font. That's really big. Anyways, got that one. Of course, and of course, so excited for both of these. Murder Road, Simone St. James, don't know what it's about, don't care what it's about. Uh, only if you're lucky, Stacey Willingham, don't know what it's about, don't care what it's about. And then I picked up the Mayor of Maxwell Street by Avery Cunningham. I didn't realize how big this was. Um, a friend of mine is reading it currently or just finished it. So she, she really liked it. Uh, 1921, America is burning. A fire of vice and virtue rages as ev on every shore. And Chicago is its bleeding heart. We're going to go with that. So book of the month books, super excited about. And also considering giving up book of the month. So I don't know. I'm so torn. Then um, my book club and I went book shopping. It's fine. it's fine. Two of these they gave to me though. So Amber got an extra copy of Meet the Bene Benedettos by Katie Katungno. Um, a list movie star moves to Los Angeles next door to a family of five eligible sisters. It sounds like Car Meet the Kardashians meets Pride and Prejudice. I said I'd give it a whirl. And then Nicole gave me Call It What You Want by Bridge Kemmerer. Um, she said it was cute. It was a good palate cleanser is what she said. So I, I was free, so I took it from her. Um, let's see. We went to a few different stores in... Um, we went to Madison. So first place we went to was Frugal Muse, which I is my favorite used bookstore like ever. Um... So I picked up a couple of books from there. Uh, we have May Luna by Kelly McNeil. My friend Jen actually read this and then read it right away again and had the biggest book hangover for it. Absolutely loved it to death. My other friend Lindsay said it was just fine. So I'm curious. Um, sounds like contemporary, no, set in the 90s, but romance. So we're gonna give that a whirl. 
Uh, then I found The Mysterious Case of the Albertan Angels by Janice Hallett. I've read the appeal by her, loved it. I have the Trifer Code over here somewhere that I'm excited to read. But this one has, it follows a cult. Um, Amanda, I told her about it. She listened to it and absolutely loved it right away. So when I saw it at this place, I picked it up. And then I came across this book, which I haven't seen anywhere. This is The Rail Splitter by John Grib Cribb. Um, it is a novel of Abraham Lincoln's life. It's historical fiction, but follows the events of his life. Um, I, I, I have a slight obsession with Abraham Lincoln. I don't know why. I, I just do. I think he's fascinating. I think if I could pick a person to go back in time and meet, it would totally be him. Um, so I started reading this in the store and it definitely hooked me, but it really just follows his story on his journey from a log cabin in Illinois to the White House. So really interested in this one. I'm hoping I don't wait until Historathon to read it, but I don't know. I love it. And this cover is fantastic. So I'm excited about that one. All right. So then we went to um, Mystery to Me, which is an independent bookstore in Madison, which is the cutest cutest place. I love it. And I found this super creepy one. It's called Episode 13 by Craig DeLouis. Um, it is follows a group of ghost hunters basically as they go to like what's deemed the scariest place on earth and as uh, it apparently gets super creepy and it has like the transcripts from um the show and like I don't know I thought it was just a really interesting how it was put together it has journal entries and I thought it was interesting, so I picked that up. And then of course we stopped at Half Price Books because we just weren't ready to be done with the day yet. So I found a few books for Book Exchange, so hopefully they still apply at the end of the year, I don't know. But they were on the clearance rack, so I really only paid, I got four books and I paid $8, so it's fine. Um, I picked up a book by Kevin Kwan, Sex and, Va and Vanity. He wrote Crazy Rich Asians, with that, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and I thought this would be a f another fun, I've been looking for like those light little palette cleansers in between books. So add that to my list. And then the girls convinced me to pick up The Wish by Nicholas Burks. I know that we broke up with him, um, but apparently it's worth, you know, at least getting back together for one more bookish ride and read The Wish is what I've been told. So they haven't let me down yet. I trust them. We'll give it a try. So anyways. That is my massive pile of books that I have brought into my house. So now we need to make room and start, you know, getting rid of some. So check out my Pango listing below if you're looking for some good books. Um, just trying to, you know, keep my list of, or my piles of books on my shelves of reality. So I've been trying to put more and more on there and just get them out into the world and into some good readers' hands. So check out that below. Um, Otherwise, if you've read any of these books, leave me a chat below. Tell me which ones I need to pick up first. I'm excited for all of them, which is the hard part. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.